Rogue Sport and Basic Estrim and FWD starts at $22,615 with destination charges. The test vehicle was the top-level Rogue Sport SLAWD at north of $31,000, with heated leather seats, moonroof, nav, heated steering wheel and heated outside mirrors. Driver assist equipment includes lane departure warning and prevention, blind spot information system, surround view cameras, rear cross traffic alert and automatic emergency braking. The interior seems nice enough, though the more you look the more you see little cost-cutting measures like the seat bottom signs that are cloth to save on bits and scraps of leather. Some of the controls seem cheap, like the small, shallow radio volume knob. The navigation does not seem to sync with the vehicle light controls to auto dim for night driving, though there's a button to do that manually. This car makes just 141 horsepower and 147 pound-feet of torque at 4,400 revolutions per minute from its 2.0-liter 4. And it has a CVT. So the sport moniker pertains to nothing performance-related, just its diminutive size and zippy color choices like Monarch or Enjoy or Line. But the car drives, fine. It's nimble enough. Acceleration is sufficient to get you to the grocery store and back. The cabin is quiet. Steering is light but not lifeless, and a sport setting gives it a little more heft. Indicated mileage was just 18 miles per gallon in a week of city driving, far below its EPA ratings of 24 city, 30 highway and 27 combined. But winter ambient temperatures were a factor. If a subcompact crossover is your heart's desire, you've got many choices. The Rogue Sport is nice looking and not bad driving. You'd want to cross shop it against the Honda HRV. Mazda CX-3, Subaru Crosstrek, Kia Niro and Nza only knows how many others, and our car comparison tool is a great way to do that. First, a word about the regular, non-sport Nissan Rogue. It makes a terrific first impression. It looks a bit more stylish than more utilitarian rivals. The attractive cabin has materials that look and feel good. There's so much space inside that they even managed to shoehorn in a third row seat. Pricing is also competitive, and fuel economy is among the class best. Furthermore, people like Star Wars. I totally get why so many people buy the Rogue after checking it out on paper and at a dealership. The trouble is, the Rogue gets less appealing the more you drive it. The engine is underpowered, and the CVT does it few favors. Everything about the driving experience can be described as dreary. I drove one from Nashville to New York last year and, well, I would have rather driven something else. Something like, say, the Nissan Rogue Sport. Is it sporty? Heck no, but there's enough of a difference between the Sport and its mechanically related big brother to make a significant difference. Straight line performance isn't any better, but the throttle response is far sharper, providing the impression of a vehicle that's more keen to actually move. The suspension is tauter and the ride is more controlled, resulting in a far better car to drive. Dreary didn't really come to mind while driving it. At the same time, the Rogue Sport benefits from comparable good looks and basically the exact same cabin design and quality. Sure, it's not as big as the regular Rogue, but it's not that small, either. For those who don't really need max cargo and passenger space, I'm a firm believer that this Rogue Sport would be a much better choice than its big brother. It makes a similar first impression, but its second, 13th and 40th impressions are much stronger. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.